Hello my friends, Sylvie Moon here. Thanks so much for joining me here on my channel in my art studio, which is in my garage. And um, I have a new project for you today. Something that I felt that maybe you guys can do with me. So um, I'm gonna show you how to do it. We're gonna talk a little bit about it um, as we get go along. I'm gonna give you a little intro after the short nature break. See you soon. Okay, so composition books, they look like this. This is my tablet cover. But they look like this, they're filled with lined paper, they cost a dollar, sometimes less at your local dollar store or you know Walmart, Target type store. And sometimes as an artist, I get a little bored with the covers. So I decided it was time to paint. I, I've been really into painting the covers of my journals a lot more lately. So the last video I did the painting of my newest bullet journal, which is for quarter two, which is the spring season basically um, of bullet journal planning. And um, today I'm going to be painting this notebook, which I'm turning into my um, nature sketchbook. So any kind of flowers or animals or other things that inspire me, I'm going to be working on in the inside of this. And I have a lot of really nice sketchbooks where I feel like if I mess up the I'm messing up the pages or I'm wasting money, um, some of these sketchbooks can range up to like $20-25. And so I take my time with those sketchbooks and I don't get to like really play and get loose and get free. And so that's why I thought, time for my composition notebook. Get, get it out and start going for it. I've done uh, composition notebooks before, but never filled them completely with art. So I'm excited to use this one and really just go for it in this one. Lots of, it's just gonna be, the theme is gonna be nature. I like to have a theme for my journals. So um, let's get started. I'll show you how I do it. It's so easy. Anybody can do this seriously, guys. Okay. All right, so let's get started here. First, here is the composition notebook that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. And I chose it because it has that soft cover, like I said. Um, also, it has a very particular texture of the paper. There were a lot of other styles or brands of notebooks there, but I really loved this one because it had like a very smooth, um, sort of paper, lined paper on it. I also like the color of the lines and this paint is also from Dollar Tree. It's a Craftwise black uh, chalkboard paint. So I'm gonna use that. I really like this paint. Um, it is a little more glossy than I expected, but next time when I purchase some chalkboard paint, I'm gonna buy a, a little more of an expensive brand, but I love chalkboard paint. It's really fun to work with. I love the super matte finish, that really flat black finish. So that's what I was trying to achieve, but you'll see after it dries, it still has a little bit of gloss. So it's from Dollar Tree, you know, what do you expect? And this has lasted a very long time. I mean, very little paint goes a long way on this. Um, so the reason I'm choosing black and white is I'm kind of taking it back a little bit on some of my paintings. I've been feeling a little overwhelmed with having to create like all of these um, color palettes and work with many colors. And so a skill or something that, that a tool that you can use to kind of take back a little bit of control, step back in your art is to just go back to the good old black and white and um, learn from, go from there. And I can, I can definitely say that when I work with black and white, I feel like the finished product turns out better um, at the end. Not saying that it's, I haven't had really great work in color because there are definitely lots of pieces in color that I have, I'm really proud of. But I can say for the majority of uh, my work, when I'm working in black and white, I feel more satisfied with the finished look of the piece. So I thought, well, I just really wanna make a really fun, easy tutorial for my viewers. And I don't want this to be a stressful situation where I have to do some sort of complicated piece of artwork or painting. And so I decided to just keep it simple and start with the idea of just black and white. So you can see I'm just needing to add a little bit more paint here to my palette and I'm just pushing the paint around. I mean, really this paint is covering most everything. There are just a few little spots where I kind of went over um, and retouched or touched up. Otherwise, um, this is really 
uh, a quick and easy process. And you can see that I did um, put a couple of plastic, um, they're just mats for, um, you know, placemats for eating. I got those at Dollar Tree too, a long time ago. Um, and I use those to just kind of protect um, the table below. Not that I really care because there's a ton of paint on that table. But um, also to really help kind of make the pages, um, the covers a little more stiff. So when I'm painting, it's just easier. Nice flat, pro a nice flat surface to work on. And now I have this ivory color. I decided to go with ivory instead of bright white. I don't know. I tend to like... I've been really into like taupes and ivories and light grays and French grays lately. So I thought it'd be really fun just to do like a simple flower plant like shape um, with using the white. And I just kind of picked like a very small, it's probably like a four uh, brush four round, which is like a watercolor brush style. And um, just going in and creating this very simple kind of sharp pointed um, little flower like plant like thing it's totally imaginary i'm just making this up as i go along so now that i have started creating this sort of leaf um, shape to create more of a flower or plant like shape i'm going to go ahead and continue making these in different sizes so and with more or less um, little leaves. So there's a small one and then sort of a, a more poofy one, if you will. And um, this time I'm going to change the direction that it is going. So I like, you know, to kind of each one to be a little bit different than the other. So as I'm working, I'm adding variety by just changing up a little thing, a little bit at a time. Um, and as I was painting this one, I realized I really liked the look of it being filled in with color. So I thought, okay, I'm just gonna loosely add um, some more paint to fill in some of the blanks in these little shapes. And I, I really liked the way that was turning out. So I continued to do that for all of them. And um, see now this one has longer leaves, longer shapes. Um, so again, another variety of this particular little plant, little made up fantasy flower here. And um, just kind of trying to change it each, every, each and every time. Each one, you know, the leaves are a little bit different. Each one has more, some have less. Um, yeah, just changing up the direction, changing up um, how I lay the paint down as well. Uh, makes a difference and you can see I'm not interested in like painting every single little inch and nook and cranny I I'm okay if a little bit of the black background peeks out or if it's looking more gray or if it's has more white popping um, that is the fun of making it have that mixed look or variation to each one because in nature that's that's the truth about you know, when you draw or illustrate or paint nature, there's not anything that looks exactly like anything else. Like even if you're, you know, um, painting a bunch of roses from the same rose bush, each rose is going to be completely different. So keeping that in mind when you're painting nature, um, there's always a variation to nature. It's always gonna be a little bit different. And so um, here uh, you can see I'm doing different shapes and different sizes. And now I decided that I needed to um, bring one um, that kind of came off the page. So visually it gives it a little bit like it's carrying on um, up further beyond what I am drawing or what I am painting. And that also adds some variation to um, each of these little shapes. I'm trying to shy away from making a pattern, even though I love patterns and there's nothing wrong with that. I just really wanted this to feel a little bit more like kind of a, a sketchy feel and um, a loose, you know, feel. So I'm gonna go ahead and speed this up, cut through a little bit and let you watch the rest of uh, how I place these flowers down.
Now I wasn't really sure if I was gonna be adding stems and um, usually what I do is I do plan out a general idea of what I wanna do in a sketch beforehand when I do paintings. But in this case, I really just wanted it to feel like I was sketching. So if I sketched before I actually did this, this particular kind of sketch painting, I don't think it would have the same looseness and feel. It would have been a little, knowing me, I would have planned it out. It would have been just a little bit too overly planned. Cause lately I feel like I've been planning out my art a little more than I want to in the moment. Like I need to loosen up a little bit more. So this is why I'm going this route where it's just sort of like, I, I'm feeling it out. I didn't know exactly which direction these stems were gonna go once I decided to add stems. And as I was painting the stems and kind of looking at how it was turning out, I decided to add um, leaves as well. Now, this, the leaves are basically the same shape as the little pieces of the flower, what brings the flower together, just little, little leaf shape. And uh, I first started with a line down the center and then I decided to fill them in. I think if I went back, I might have made the leaves a little bit smaller. Um, and it, a little different shape. So there would be a variation in shape, but this is how, you know, I haven't, I'm a little out of practice in this sketchy painting style and it's really my favorite. I'm not sure why I've been deviating from it, but um, that happens as an artist, you wanna experiment different styles and kind of feel out like, what is my style? What do I enjoy? And I feel like the one that you keep showing up for, the one that's fun, the one that's easy in your mind, um, not that you won't be challenged, at times, but it feels easy and fun, has a sense of ease to it, right? That's what I wanna to gravitate towards, not pushing myself to doing something that maybe I don't feel like I'm ready to, uh, to do, and then I feel stressed and then it doesn't turn out because I'm stressed and I'm not enjoying it. I have to have fun. I feel like when I have fun, um, that art tends to turn out a lot better. It's not always like a masterpiece or anything. I'm not expecting that. Um, and really, I don't go into making art thinking I'm going to make a masterpiece. I'm just join doing it because it feels good to me. Sorry if you hear some kids screaming in the background. They're my neighbors. I can't really change that. So <laughs> I am in my sound booth, but it's still the sounds from outside are still kind of seeping in. So sorry about that, my friends. The sounds of nature. So here what I'm doing is instead of I was thinking about adding color. And I decided against it and I decided to add text instead of color. So I'm going to, I'm going ahead and stamping out a little saying that I had in my head and, um, about nature. And, um, I really miss my typewriter by the way, because doing this is fun. And I actually use these stamps in my bullet journal all the time. They're really fun to use, but I miss my typewriter for writing out like longer sentences um, I used to make a lot of zines using my typewriter as well. So I miss the typewriter, but, uh, and I could have done this a lot faster had I had a typewriter, although I don't think this font would have been as big. These are nice, large size letters. So, you know, you're probably going to see me using a typewriter and getting a typewriter at some point in the future here, my friends. Um, and now I'm going to go ahead and cut out, um, these, uh, words. This is just a scrap paper from another journal that has some paper that's not like super valuable or anything. I just, I wanted paper that was nice and light. Um, that would be easy to glue down onto the cover. So as I cut them out, I'm just gonna let them drop down into, onto the cover and um, I'm gonna rearrange them. But for now, I'm just sort of making sure to cut everything out the way I want. And then I'm just gonna um, create a composition I like. I realized I needed to, bring all of the words to the front cover because once this is closed, I'm really gonna only see the front cover for the most part. So I thought it'd be nice to have the saying at the front. Um, you could come in with some matte finish. I'm gonna glue these down, by the way, I'm gonna glue these down with a glue stick. Um, just a simple glue stick I got at Walmart. You don't need anything fancy, but you could come in later and put a matte finish, a clear matte finish over the top, or if you want it to be shiny, you could do a shiny glossy finish. Uh, but I decided not to do that because I wanted to keep this uh, project simple enough for you out there, my viewers, who may want to do some kind of a simple project. Um, and this is as simple as it gets, my friends, and it turns out so lovely and impactful, uh, especially when you just choose the two colors, the black and white. Or you could choose any two colors you want, but I feel like black and white really pop. You know, they really work together well. Now I'm going to go ahead and remove these plastic... Um, mats that I have underneath to hold it still. And there's my finished notebook, my friends. I'm really happy with it. 
Um, I hope you try this at home because it doesn't cost much. You can get everything at Dollar Tree. Um, and if you don't have stamps, letters, you can write it and then cut out your writing. You know, write it in a, in a way that looks really cool or you can find words in a magazine and collage them down. So yeah, really happy with this. Feel like it really pops. I feel like it's very graphic. It was fun. So I hope you guys try this at your home. So that's it, my friends. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate you guys. I really appreciate who you are here, my small group of subscribers. I hope to grow one day into a bigger channel, maybe, perhaps, um, you know, as I get better at editing and being in front of the camera and sharing what might be more interesting to you here on YouTube. Um, so don't forget to get out there, listen to nature, my friends. She knows what she's talking about. I will see you soon. See you on the next video next week. Bye. He's moving his wings so fast that the camera is capturing it, but it's like almost see-through at this point. Can you do a slow motion video of his wings? <laughs>